Hello, everyone. Finally streaming. All right, let's do some work on gun game, huh? How is everyone doing? So tonight, also let me know if the audio levels are good or bad or whatever. Uh, so tonight, oh gosh, the spammers are back. No. Uh, there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, anyway. So I've been doing a lot of, audio's good, good. All right, I've been doing a lot of systems work lately on the game. And so I think tonight what I'm gonna focus on is making content. So if you saw my latest dev vlog, I showed how I go about the process of adding new player passives. And so I'm gonna do some of that tonight. I'm also gonna do some gun affix work and also probably create a new gun. I might actually start with creating a new gun because I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the spam is something else, really. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and start with making a new gun. That's always fun. I could show you all how I actually do that. What am I thinking for the gun? So I was thinking about just doing something really, really standard. Something like a, a rifle or something. Um, or I could make like a... You know what, how about we do a bone gun? A bone gun sounds awesome. So what I typically do here, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So I will go ahead and play this actually. Thought this would premiere, well, it's kind of a premiere. It's a live stream premiere. So gun game is, um, hold on. I have my script here that I can read. <laughs> All right, so gun game is a roguelite shooter where you fight through waves of enemies by crafting your guns and collecting unique game-changing passive abilities. So I'll go ahead and play the game for a little bit right here. So basically it's kind of in the style of Vampire Survivors, Brotato, those kind of wave-based games where you basically just kill a bunch of enemies and get all kinds of power-ups. Um, and so the idea is you clear the wave just like that, which is a, a time-based wave. This, by the way, this is all work in progress, so if anything looks bad, uh, trust me, I know it looks bad. So this is the passive selection screen. So these are passives, permanent passives that I can select to upgrade. So this one, clear nearby bullets on dash. I like to grab that one a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And then I have the opportunity to get some new gun parts. So every gun is composed of three unique parts, the receiver, the magazine, and the barrel. And each part can have their own stats. And so the idea is that you'll be able to construct your guns, put together a good combination of stats, make something really OP, and then use that to kill enemies. So here I've got a banana magazine, um, which I already have a banana magazine in my banana gun. And so I am going to actually reroll this and that gives me a banana barrel. But you can see I can click over to my shotgun here and I could put a banana barrel there, but that's actually gonna reduce some of my stats. So that doesn't really help me. So I'm gonna reroll and I've got the Moss receiver. So this one's actually good um, if I put it on this gun because my DPS, my fire rate and my total capacity goes up. So I'm gonna equip that. And now I've got a, a changed gun. It shoots bananas faster than it did before. So that's basically the formula of the game, and I'm just going to be adding tons of content, different affixes. Let's see if I can get an affix here on my guns to show you where the real meat of the game is. And you can see when I dash, whoops, <laughs> when I dash, it will clear the pass or clear the bullets just like that. What about a gun? where whenever you shoot a phantom clone or gun is created a lot. Yes, I do have a plan for a phantom gun, but I was gonna make it a passive ability. I want to find a way to enable like a minion build in this game because I love minion builds. So something along those lines is definitely going to happen. Um, I want to say that you're a great inspiration. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. I'm also trying to make a, a roguelike with mining mechanics. Well, I wish you luck in your game. Happy to be an inspiration. A slime gun, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I love it. 
Going well, Thomas. Thanks for asking. How are you? How'd you get a spite to be dark themed? I believe it's in the preferences somewhere. It's just a standard. Uh, well, I can't open it right now, but it's just a standard um theme that comes with a sprite. Okay, so passives. So here's another one. Um, reload both guns on dash. That's a good one. Or I can increase health. Let's go with increase health. I'm going to select that. And let's see if we can actually get... Okay, here we go. So I've got a shotgun barrel, which got standard, uh, st um, standard stats here. But I also have this affix. Adds one poison stack to enemies on hit up to 10. So now I get to choose, okay, where do I want to put this? Uh, we've already modified this gun, so let's put it on the other. Oh, but that doesn't change it. All right, I'll put it on this gun. So now we've got a moss receiver, a banana magazine, and a shotgun. <laughs> a shotgun barrel on this gun, and we're going to be adding poison. So let's see how that works. Oh, and look at this. We, uh, we got a little chain elevator here. So let's go ahead and take this and see where it goes. Oh, what is this? This is the work in progress shopkeeper. So I could talk to the shopkeeper and he offers all kinds of, of different um, parts. And the thing about the parts in the shop is that they are always guaranteed to have two affixes, except for this one, which it looks like it generated the same unique affix twice. And so it only shows up once. So I have to fix that. So which one do we want? So we got more poison stacks. I don't have that many affixes in the game, so you're going to see them repeated a lot, but Okay, here we go. Here's a cool one. Bullets track to the nearest enemy and bullet splits when colliding with enemies. So let's go ahead and put that. We'll buy that. It's 11 gold. And oh, I don't have enough money. I was going to buy some health too. All right. Shopping over. All right, let's go see how that looks. So you can see now my bullets are from my shotgun are going toward the enemies and I'm applying poison stacks with my banana gun. So you can see that guy's poisoned. So yeah, that's basically the gist of the game. And the the goal basically is just to add a bunch of new enemies, bunch of new content, lots of affixes to make the game feel real fresh every time you play it. The dash is unlimited. Yes, the dash is, well, it's unlimited in a sense. There is this little... Um, this little green arrow under my character here, which indicates that I have a dash ready. And when I dash, it goes away and I can't dash again until that comes back. I'm gonna make that more obvious to the player. Uh, but, so, you don't have a finite number of dashes, but there is a cooldown, basically. Um, and you can upgrade the number of dashes that you have. So make a drone passive. Yeah, I would love to do something like that as well. And shoot at the opposite direction of your cursor. For a minion build, you could make an on-kill effect of larva or something that come out of the location of the slain enemy. Yeah, um, I do have a plan for something like that too. Uh, yeah, basically some summon like worms out of dead enemies and have them go toward the nearest enemy. There's a lot of cool things that can be done here. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun with this game and I'm glad that you all are enjoying it as well. So. Yeah, so that's the game. I am going to start work on that bone gun now. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I basically do is I typically just go in and open up uh, the A sprite file for a gun that I already have. And then I just go ahead and save as and then I'll make a new folder bone and then we'll put it in there. Why is this being called template? Uh, bone. Cool. All right. I'll just make sure I've got my palette loaded up. So. Super inaccurate, but fires a ton of weak bullets and spreads very speedily. Yeah, that's an option. Yeah, I don't... I don't really have any particular ideas about... The other thing with the guns is sometimes they come with guaranteed affixes. So there's a crystal gun that has the guaranteed affix that your bullets will split when they hit enemies. And so I want to utilize that feature a lot more as well. So we'll see what we can do with the bone gun. Maybe we'll, we will make it just like a, a super spray of bullets. <laughs> that would be kind of fun. 
All right, so let's start with the receiver. Oops. So receiver old, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna turn down the opacity of this one, just so I can kind of get a guide for what the sizing should be like. And now I have to draw something that resembles a bone. So maybe we make it like a rib cage or something. So make it like a super, something like that, and then maybe have like a spine going through it. That could work, that could work. Make it more submachine gun size, perhaps. Yeah, something like that. So we'll just leave that. Oops, oh, I drew over the old, all right, whatever. Oh, that's why it was, <laughs> that's why it was dark. That's fine. Have you thought about making a modifier that allows effects like poison spread between enemies? Yes, I do. See, I sound like I'm just saying, oh yeah, I already have a plan for all of this, but let me actually show you what the board looks like. So here's my task board. So where's my ideation? So player passive ideas. So right here, spread insert status here to nearby enemies. So poison, blood, fire, electric, whatever other status effects. Uh, what other things do I have in? Summon a ghost gun that mirrors your lowest damage gun and shoots nearby enemies. That was already in there. Uh, bleeding enemies spawn a blood golem on death. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, I'll make this a little bigger. Zap a random enemy every X seconds. Grant invulnerability when picking up gold. Deal damage equivalent to your current gold when picking up gold. Now we've got some other affixes. So I do have, I'm not just, uh, I'm not just BSing you and saying, oh yeah, I already thought of that. <laughs> like those things were actually written down already. So. Small skull would be very cool. Oh yeah, 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 on the gun, yeah. What if I had a dinosaur skull barrel? I can try to integrate a skull. You have to keep in mind, I'm not a great artist, so I may not be able to deliver on these things, but we're gonna try anyway. Is it Trello? No, this is uh, this is uh, Obsidian MD note-taking app with the Obsidian Kanban plugin, uh, which I highly recommend because the, the good thing about Obsidian is that it stores all of your notes locally. So you get control of your data if that's something that you're interested in. How do I stay motivated to keep working on a game? Um, it's not a question of motivation, it's a question of discipline. You have to hold yourself to a routine and stick to it even when development sucks because you are going to experience slog in your game development and the only way, th the only way out is through, so to speak. So motivation is not the correct way to think about it. You just have to be disciplined and that's not a satisfying answer, but it's the only appropriate answer, I think. If you need help in terms of pixel art, let me know. Cool. Yeah, I will. I will think about that. I think I'm just going to I'm going to handle this all myself because it's a great learning opportunity, but I do appreciate the offer and, you know, it th that might change in the future. I might need someone with pixel art skills, so I appreciate the offer for sure. Blind effect. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. What is my Obsidian thing? Uh, it's just the dark. Um, it's the latest update of Obsidian with dark dark mode. I, I haven't done anything special to it, so it's the latest, what, a 1.0 version? All right, so let's draw this barrel. So the barrel is going to be... So we've got to try to incorporate a skull somehow. Um... Oh, that's going to be difficult. Let's see if I can do this. So let's lock this. Let's hide that. Okay. We don't need that. So let's see if I can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a dinosaur skull, but perhaps I can do like a human skull. That uh, might be too big, but let's see how it works. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Maybe we do something like that. I don't know if you can really see that on the stream. There's not a lot of contrast here, is there? Apologies if that's not super visible. Um. Oh, goodness. Please bear with me while I struggle through this. And the other thing that's tricky with what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep to a very strict 64 color palette. Well, 68 color palette, um, which I feel like is limiting in some ways, but it's also just a very good way to practice your art because you don't have to worry about if you're picking the right colors or not. You go down from, what, 16 million color choices to 64. It's very... Uh, <laughs> It's limiting in a way, but also freeing in a way. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's not enough room here. Why did I choose C sharp over GD script? Basically, the reason is that I'm a lot more comfortable working with statically typed languages. So it just makes it easier for me to develop systems when I can rigidly specify like what the shapes of the data are. And there's a couple of nice things with C Sharp too. Like you can pull in NuGet packages and use those. And it's just a more comfortable experience for me, basically. That's, that's only it. What's your discipline look like? Do you work every day a certain number of hours? I don't set a certain number of hours. I just try to work on the game every day. So after my after my work day, since I, I work a 40 hour week normally, after my work day, I'll eat dinner and then I'll do at least an hour and a half or two hours of work on the game. But some days I'm not feeling it. But even on those days when I'm not feeling it, I'll still go in and do like a 15 minute change or a 30 minute change just to keep the momentum going a little bit. I think the worst thing that you can do is like, not do any work on your game for a couple of days in a row because then that's when it becomes likely that you're just never going to come back to the game and sometimes that's necessary you know you don't want to be working on a game that's failing right you do need to be able to realize when something's not working i've made a bunch of videos like that on this channel about giving up on games gun game was actually one of them um because i didn't like the direction it was going, but I overhauled the game and how it works, and now I'm feeling much better about it. And it's much easier to work on a game that you're excited about, um, even when it sucks sometimes. Oh goodness. This is not going to end up well. So I wonder if I do something like that, make it more of a skeleton shape. This is just... I don't know what I'm doing. What do I use as my idea board? It's uh, Obsidian MD with the Obsidian Kanban community plugin. <laughs> I mean, this, I feel like I can get this into a spot where it looks half decent. I just got to figure out what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just trying to put down rough shapes and figure out like if I can find something that works. I know there's pixel artists in the chat now just absolutely reeling. Maybe if we make this like a super thick, almost like an AK style magazine. But the problem with that is that it doesn't really look like a bone. So I wonder if I can, can I, maybe I can do something with different colors to make it look like a bone. Hmm. Uh, 
think you picked amazing colors though. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I just got a palette off of low spec, so the extent of my color picking was finding a palette that I liked. But yeah, I do think that the colors work really well and I'm happy with the palette. I haven't really felt a need to change it. So I'm going to just rigidly adhere to these for the entirety of the game and see what I, see where that goes. What if you rotate the skull so the chin is facing forward? So rotate it like away. Like that. I think the problem is I could give the skeleton a nose. That's actually like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I discover something? If I make the chin jut out a little bit like that. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Make it look like a little Neanderthal skull, maybe? <laughs> or like Johnny Bravo's skull. Make the eyes and mouth darker would look better. Let's see. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter. All right, all right. I can see it. And then I wonder if I go to the receiver, I wonder if I punch more holes in here to make it look more like a skeleton. It's just, the problem is the guns are so small that I feel, I feel the pressure around being able to put detail into them. Like, I think that's just a problem with pixel art generally. Like, how do I represent what I'm trying to represent so that the, the viewer knows what it is without using too much detail? It's very difficult. I was one of those people that was like, I'm going to do pixel art because it's easy and it doesn't take any effort. Wrong. Make use references. Yeah, I could do that. I haven't really made a habit of doing that, but I, I probably should do that. That's a good suggestion. Front end engineer by day and C sharp is killing me. Oh, you're telling me you don't use uh, TypeScript on the front end. I am also a front end engineer by day, but I use TypeScript for everything. It still look good if the mouth opens. OK, let's see. So something like that. Uh, wait a minute. So let's get rid of that. OK, wait a minute. And then what if we do something like this? So to give it a little bit of that depth, perhaps. Uh, nope. It, would it help to put like some tefers in there? Hmm. Wow, this is difficult. What if I just, uh, hmm. Hold on, I have an idea. If I just make. like horns to obscure the fact that this is <laughs> not that great. Okay, so now it looks like an ogre skull, which actually is kind of cool. I should have probably put that horn on a different layer. How's that? That's shaping up. I think that's awkward. I'm going to get rid of that. Pay people to make art. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's totally valid. Pay people to make art if you've got the disposable income. I did that for my first game, which ended up being absolute garbage anyway, and I delisted it from Steam, but we won't talk about that. Hey, thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. Yeah, I have a huge respect for pixel artists as well. Eyes are pretty large in the human skull. 
See, the problem is I don't know how to convey that the eyes are larger without making it just a big block like that, you know? I guess I could add, that kind of looks like a cheekbone, right? If I add that right there, that kind of gives it a little bit of shape. Hello, Dr. Toucan Kamun. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Maybe changing the colors to more yellowish could help sell more as bones. Yeah, I'm going to play with the colors. Gray more than this purplish color. Yeah, I'm going to play with the colors once I decide. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting to being in a good spot with the barrel, which is the head here. I'm feeling better about this than I was five minutes ago. But the colors are not final, so we're going to set this aside for a little bit. And now, help me out with the magazine. So, how should I make the magazine? Like, I could make it perhaps a bone. So, if I do something like... See, here's the thing. Like, how do you make it look like a bone when it's not that big? Uh, maybe I could do... Like this. And offset it a little bit. Maybe go the other way. I wonder if anti-aliasing would be helpful here. That's a new trick I learned. Something like that. I should be using this preview instead of zooming in and out. Bad habits die hard, right? Darker tone above and underneath the eye. Okay, I will, let's see. Let me just try that real quick. Maybe not above, above but below. Oops, oh, I put that on the wrong layer. We'll play with the head some more. Choose something long, like long thin bone. Hello, Alex McKee. Participating in the first game jam. Awesome. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. You're welcome. Thank you for watching the video and thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. Yeah, good luck in your game jam. Game jams are a lot of fun. They're also the best way to rapidly increase your game development skill, at least in my opinion. Oh, random shill for you all. I have a game jam tips video, so bookmark that and watch it after this one. <laughs> the self-promotion gets out of hand sometimes. What can I say? So a long, thin bone. Let's set this one aside. So how would I do that? So do I want to add a little bit of a curve in it? And so, yeah... Based on context, could probably assume it's a bone. The problem is that, yeah, in the context of this this entire gun, they could figure that out. But the thing is, since the gun parts are interchangeable, the magazine could be by itself on a different gun. Actually, it most likely will be by itself on a different gun. So I still kind of need to put in a lot of effort to make sure that it's looking all right. Looking like a bone. Does that look like a bone? <laughs> Great video, watched it a few times, cool. Hello, one man indie. Uh, yeah, at, that's companies, right? Nothing gets done on a timely manner. That first idea is cool. Which, which first idea? I, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Add a little chip into the bottom of the bone. It has to be three wide to work. So this one is three wide. So like that. Does that look like a bone? <laughs> I'm only working with a canvas here of like what? A total of like six by six maybe for the magazine. Undo, undo, undo. 
Make it look like a four on bone. All right, let's 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 pull up the references here, so. Let's see, four arm bone. I hope I don't accidentally pull up anything like super grisly. Okay, I think we're good. Forearm bone. Okay. Oh, we don't need to see fractures. No, no, no. Go away. So it's two bones. So if I do... Um, let's just draw two parallel lines downward and then shift them over. And then that might actually work. Um, let's delete one pixel. Maybe I can work with the colors to make it a little bit better, but maybe that'll work pretty nicely. Oh, I keep putting that pixels on the wrong layer. Okay, let's lock that. That's the hardest thing for me in A-Sprite is doing things on the correct layer. It's unbelievable how many times I just don't do that correctly. Well, I think this one is probably okay. I think when, when people see the name and then they see the look of it, it'll probably be all right. Okay, so let's play with some colors here. Oh, I did it again. Okay. Uh, oops. How do I... There we go. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do, which is going to make color picking a little bit easier... Oh, actually, never mind. I was going to say add an outline to it, but I actually add outlines to guns with shaders now, which I'll show you how that works. Um, when we get actually into the engine. I like it, it's Picasso. I don't know if that's... <laughs> It'll be fine. All right, so let's see. So the barrel, let's put this together. That actually looks kind of dope when you look at it all at once. I wonder if I, I'm gonna add a background to it. Just to bring out the contrast a little bit more. Make it a little bit easier to see what I'm working with. All right, it's it looks okay. I'm not so sure about the back end of the receiver here. I'm not so sure about that, but that whole section there. I kind of actually, you know what this looks like? This looks like a fish bone. So I wonder if I just like lean into that aspect of it and just make it like a, a weird fish thing. Uh, do I have to look up fish bones as well? Let's look up a cartoon fish bone. Like the fish bone idea, sweet. All right, let's take a look at what we're doing. Like the classic cartoon when the cat grabs the, the fish out of the trash can and it looks like this. So it just basically tapers in. Uh, fins are soft tissue. They're not supposed to be part of the bone. Scientifically inaccurate. <laughs> All right, um, so it basically just tapers. Oops. Uh, I think I need to bring this out more. Okay, that looks kind of good. And then if I bring the spine sort of all the way this way, and then I add 
Uh, it's going to be hard. Maybe I need to use a different color. So somebody suggested using like a yellowish color. Or I might have to use like something like a blue or a green instead. Oh wait, this is a good color. So if I do something like this. And we'll just start painting stuff. Oh, is that the magazine? Let's turn everything else off. So I guess I can just make the spine that color. Oh man, that's a mess. Now it just looks like a checkerboard pattern. What if the fish bones bullets deal extra damage but can't travel that far? Yeah, we could take a look at that. I'm definitely gonna have to do probably the same level of experimentation with the actual game mechanics that I'm doing here. Yeah, I don't like how this is turning out. We can always see how it looks in game. Maybe I'll do that. No, it needs to be pointy, doesn't it? Oh, it's a struggle. Some days I'm like on my art game and I have a, a fairly decent time making stuff. And then some days it's just like, it's a real struggle. I think this is one of those days. There's something weird about this like back end here that needs to be dealt with. All right, we're just going to delete all of this. Whoops, not all of it. <laughs> but like, yeah, that. And then... Okay, we'll just leave it. So it needs to like come down like this. And then also have... Little bone areas. What if I made... I guess some of these bones need to be coming like up. I don't even know, man. Maybe I get rid of the whole back end like this, and then I just have it curving off. Oops. Could fracture when hitting an enemy and split into bone pieces. Yeah, yeah. What game engine am I using? Godot. Yeah, we'll be in Godot in a little bit here. Yeah, I did already make a modifier for it, but there's nothing preventing me from putting the same modifier on multiple different gun parts. I might actually end up having to do that. One of the things, one of the problems I can see myself having in the near future is um, not being able to differentiate the different gun parts well enough from each other. Because at some point, like, the differentiation is just going to be, like, a slight variation in stats. And, um... Uh, thematic differences, right? So, I'm not so certain how long I can keep this up. I might have to figure out it. What I do want to do is I do want to make it so that if you manage to collect, you know, a bunch of the same pieces, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. Um, if you do manage to collect a bunch of the same pieces, I want to give it like some kind of bonus. So reward the player for finding all of the th correct thematical pieces, like a set bonus, basically, right? Like you would find in like RPGs. All right, let's do the magazine now. So I like this color that I picked here. So I'm just going to... Uh, fill this in in random spots. I think that's probably okay. Do I want to put a pixel there? I don't think so, right? I don't think I want to put one right there. Yeah, Godot is great. I recommend Godot for any 2D development. It's my favorite 2D engine. I came from GameMaker Studio 2, which is sort of like the, you know, 
the well-known 2D game engine. But when I switched to Godot right after the 3.0 alphas started coming out, I was like, wow, this is, it's a night and day difference. Um, admittedly, I haven't used Unity that much for 2D stuff. So I don't know how confident I can be in my assertion that Godot is the best 2D engine, but I think it is. It's super easy to work with. It's free. And yeah, I just love it. Gun that doubles your other gun's effects, but has weak damage in and of itself. That could be cool. Yeah, yeah. What game engine do I recommend for beginners? I, well, it depends on what kind of beginner you are. If you're a beginner at programming, um, I think that you're probably going to have a hard time learning programming and game development at the same time. But it also depends on what your aptitude is, right? Like if you're really good at picking up new things, if you are good at logical things, then it, it all depends on the person. If you're not familiar with programming, I would probably recommend to learn programming first or use an engine that has maybe like Construct or something that's event-based so you can get your mind around the logic. But if you already know programming, then I would just jump straight into Godot because its scripting is really easy to understand. Um, that would be my recommendation. But, you know, I don't I don't know how useful that is. I haven't been a beginner for a while and I haven't I haven't really interacted with many game dev beginners. I, I've met game dev beginners who started with Unity and they were just fine. So it all depends on the person. I would say try something and if you're having a really hard time with it, then try something else. So I think this is actually turning out really good. So I think what I'm going to do is let's use this color on the barrel in some places. Um, I don't know if I can darken the eyes exactly. Um, I wonder if I can add like, uh, maybe I can make this a little bit more square. No, that's too square. I need to make it like this, maybe. Oh, that's kind of cool. Makes it look like it's got like a really square like troll nose or something. So look better if I do the eyes that way. That's gonna be harder. What happens if I, did I already try to lighten that up? Now it looks like a goblin. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I want to use like a highlight color, but I don't know if I can find one that's good. Maybe blue. The jaw looks great. Okay, we'll keep the jaw. Roblox. I mean, Roblox might be uh, might be good. Maybe shade under the horn. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Unreal Engine is great for game development and general programming. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the blueprint system is really good. Roblox. Roblox might be good for beginners. I don't know. I don't have any experience with it. So shade under the horn. Maybe I just fill in like this whole backside. No, that might be too much. Do I want to do like that? Get rid of this yellow pixel. Um, maybe the horn needs another color. I don't want to, I don't want to try to like cram too many colors in here. Nope. I 
I'm wondering if the way I had it before was better. Or if I could do... I could do that, I guess. That looks decent. Um, uh, it's kind of, a uh, a not great shading job, but perhaps it'll do. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Trolling about Roblox. Okay, well. Roblox. I, all I know is that, yeah, people have made lots of money off that platform. Alright, well, we'll just call this... Good. There's something about this that's not sitting right with me. Do I need to move the horn back some more? I think maybe I just need to, like, cut down the shading a bit. I don't know, for some reason I want to remove that pixel, but that doesn't work. Oh well, we'll just leave it. I can always tweak the art later. I, I want to bring this in game now. And see how that looks. Alright, well. It's not perfect, but... I think it's time to bring it into the game. We'll see how it looks. Okay. So I'm going to do... I'll just hide this. All right. So what I do now, basically, is I take... Um, I have this script here. And I can export all the layers as separate sprites. And so I just go ahead and do this. All right, that exports all my layers. And now let's bring it into the game. All right, so into Godot we go. After a 45 minute <laughs> uh, spending uh, on that. Okay, so let's do... So basically what I do is I have different scenes for each different gun part. So I've got the barrel, magazine, and receiver. And I'll go through and I'll try to explain the system the best of my abilities after I put together the gun part. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new inherited scene, which I have a gun part base scene. I'm going to call this the bone receiver. And we're going to save it. And I save each gun into its own folder because I'm actually doing some... What is it? I, I'm finding data for the game based on string values. So if I say I want to give me a gun part, like give me the bone receiver gun part, the game knows how to parse that and then go through the directory structure. And why is this here? I'm going to delete that. It knows how to parse that and go through the directory structure to go to scenes and then game object and then gun and then bone and then it knows how to find the receiver. So that prevents me from having to make a bunch of manual connections everywhere, but I just have to make sure that things are named appropriately all the time. Hey, the crazy Ed, welcome to the stream and welcome to everyone else who joined the stream but did not, um, does not want to participate in chat. You are welcome here as well. Glad to have everyone here. Okay, so, bone receiver. So, basically what I do is, because this is a little bit iffy to set up, so I just take a look at one I've already set up. So there's a couple things here. We've got the sprite, we've got the front position, which is where the barrel connects. We've got the magazine connect position, which is where the magazine connects. And then we've got two other nodes, the hand left position and the hand right position. And those are where the player's or the enemy's hands are gonna be, because I have made the system. So if I go to my rat, I have the system such that the rat or any humanoid enemies are also able to use guns. So this is actually the moss gun. This is the moss gun that the player can get. Um, it's kind of hard to see, let's see. Yeah, so that's the moss gun that the player can get. And the system works such that I can have an enemy use it. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, it was kind of unnecessary now that I think about it, but I don't know, maybe I can do something with that in the future. Something more interesting than just 
visuals. So, let's put the sprite in here. So, I'm gonna just gonna search bone. So, we've got the receiver. So, I'll drop that in there. And I don't center the sprite. I just control the offset manually. So, I want to put this positioned sort of where the player's shoulder would be. So, kind of like right there. Whoops. So, negative four and negative three. Okay. And then I take the front position and I put it here. And I might actually need to... I have to be very careful about how I position this because things can look awkward. There we go. So, we've got our front position, our magazine connect position will go, and this is where I have to reference my sprite. Okay, so I basically want it to be right there. And then the hand left position, we'll put it maybe like right there. And then the hand right position, we'll put it right underneath the barrel here. Yeah, if you have ideas, feel free to, to throw it in the chat. I've been reading, I think, all of the ideas. I don't think I've missed a single idea. And I have a lot of them written down as well. So, yeah, ideas are welcome for sure. Okay, so now let's create another inherited scene. And this is also going to inherit from the gun part. We're going to call this one the Bone Magazine. And we're going to save that into Bone. All right, so the Bone Magazine, what I believe it doesn't require... So the bad part about this system that I wish I would have done differently, but it's too late, it's not kind of, is that all of these gun parts all have these positional nodes, the hand left position, hand right position. But some of these are only relevant, like the hand left and hand right position are only relevant for the receiver. So I've kind of got wasted nodes there. I might redo that at some point, but I don't know. I don't know, I don't, I don't think it matters. It's just kind of messy, but... We'll do it live. So I'm going to put the magazine into my sprite. Wait, can I do that? Oh, I did not know you can do that. You can just drag a resource onto the node and then it pops up with what property you want to assign it to. All right. Learning new things. Very cool. All right. We'll set this to negative two offset. And that's basically all we need to do for the magazine. And then I'm gonna create a new inherited scene again. Gun part. This is gonna be the bone barrel. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in the bone directory as well. And let's put the barrel in here. And I believe if I'm looking at the shotgun barrel, all I need to configure is the front position and the sort of the origin here. So let's, and the front position on the barrel just sort of determines where the bullets come out of. Which might be awkward in this case because the front position ideally should be like right here. Um, we'll put it right there and see how that works. That might throw off the player's aim a little bit because it's going to be what? three pixels offset from the line. So I might have to just go ahead and, and put it up here instead, but we'll see. What if you can skip choosing a passive, thus not getting powerful, but next time it rewards the player with better passives. Way more fun if you, I think, so I, I understand what you're doing with the, with the risk reward. And I, I did kind of do that with the gun parts, right? You can choose to receive gold instead of instead of picking a gun part. Um, the passives, though, I do think that I want the player to have to choose a passive every round, just because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like, I want to give the player that feeling of getting more powerful, but I also want to give the player the feeling of like, oh, I didn't get the passive that I wanted, and so I actually need to change my play style or maybe make a different build. That's kind of what I'm going for. And I think forcing the player to choose a passive every time kind of facilitates that. Um, but I understand the idea to sort of delay gratification, right? Skip something to get something better later. And I think I can probably do that with an in-game event. So we have the shop events, right? But I'm thinking, you know, you have something like a uh, 
you know, to go off of your idea, this is an idea that I just thought of based on that, is you have an event like a shrine where you have to sacrifice one of your current passives. So you actually get to remove a passive from yourself. And then maybe a couple waves later, it comes back and yeah, maybe the passive's more powerful or something like that. So maybe just like a, a less common way to remove and change passives like that might be something interesting. So yeah, thanks for thanks for that idea because I it's not exactly your idea, but your idea gave me that idea. So yeah, I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably I'm gonna think about that some more and add that into the game, I think. Because yeah, if you if you have to give up a passive to get something else, then you are risking it, right? Because you wanna anyway, yeah, you wanna not get rid of a well, I'm gonna have to think about it. It's a tough problem. I might have to end up figuring out how to like score passives in terms of how powerful they are in order for a system like that to work because otherwise you're just gonna say, oh, this passive doesn't really affect me, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. And it's like, well, there's no downside to it, right? We'll have to think about it. But I do appreciate the suggestions. Please keep them coming. So we've got the gun all pieced together. And so now what do I need to do? So the next thing I need to do is there's actually custom resources here. So all of these right here, these are all the, the stats. So the banana barrel here has the display name, the bullet speed, whoops, the bullets per shot and the bullet angle. And I can also put an array of guaranteed affixes in here if I wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, do I wanna duplicate these? So let's duplicate. I forgot if duplication of resources is problematic or not. I'll have to check it. Bone magazine, bone receiver. All right, so let's see. If I change the bone, so if I type bone barrel here for the name, does that change the banana barrel? It does not. Okay, great. So what stats are we gonna give the bone barrel? Maybe we'll make them super slow moving. I think somebody suggested to make them super slow moving. Let's give it a huge bullet angle, like a 30 degree angle. And let's keep one bullet per shot. So bone magazine. Ammo capacity. What kind of ammo do we want? We want probably a high ammo count, right? Maybe like 25. And then the range. Let's make it a really short range. Oops, 1500, no, 150. I kind of like the idea of making it a slow moving short range thing. Okay, and then bone receiver. And we're gonna give it a really high fire rate. What is my moss receiver? bullets per second nine. So maybe the bone receiver is like an 11 bullets per second. Ammo capacity multiplier. We'll keep that there. Damage. We'll turn it way down to like three. Scaling curve. I don't know. So the other challenge with this game is figuring out how to make um, the weapons scale as the wave goes on. So the enemies scale in health as the wave goes on, but the player needs to be able to get more and more powerful weapons to handle that. And so I haven't yet figured out a system for how to make the damage scale appropriately. I tried playing around with curves. So for instance, my shotgun receiver has sort of like a an easing in here going up, multiplying by three. I just don't know how to handle the scaling. I don't know how to do it in an appropriate way. So I have to figure that out as well. But anyway, how do you reload? Welcome, first of all, Dragon Apple. Um, reloading is, it's kind of interesting in this game. Maybe I can, I think I can start the game and show you. So when I shoot, it empties that left magazine, right? And then when I shoot the other gun, it reloads the opposite gun. So in, in a sense, in order to reload, you have to shoot the other gun. And that was a decision made basically to make sure that people are using both of their guns. 
And I think that sets up really interesting opportunities like having one of your guns just shoot really quick so that way you can just shoot it to reload. Um, so yeah. It was just a system to get people to use both of their guns without relying too heavily on one of them. So that's that's that. Which one means one button for, for one gun? So... Sorry, let me read these other ones. Bone projectiles split into fragments on impact with first enemy shooting smaller, lower damage dealing fragments to enemies behind. I do have an affix like that already, and I, I can show you how that looks in a little bit. Do you start with two guns at first? Do you start with one? You start with two. You will always have two in your inventory. It's not possible to have less than two. Uh, it's the left button, and the left button shoots the left gun, and the right button shoots the right gun. I don't know what you mean by dualies, so... If you could clarify. So yeah, so you'll always have two guns. Always. I don't think I'm going to change that at all. Uh, and I'll probably just start the player off with some really generic guns so that the player doesn't get anything super exciting at the beginning, and then that increases the excitement when, like, you start getting these wild and wacky guns, right? Okay, so the bone barrel and everything has been configured, so here, watch this. The last thing that I need to do is I'm going to go to my player gun manager, and this is also temporary, but... So I have this uh, method in here. So the gun part resource is what I was just working with, so these are gun part resources right here. And I can call from ID with a string. And what that does is that's able to go in, go to the gun registry, get the gun part from the ID. It duplicates the resource for me so that I'm not passing around resources by reference. And then it assigns some extra information, does some updates, and then returns that. And then I've got that resource. So this is a gun part resource. And then I can just call add gun part and each resource has this function two part node and this is where i was talking about this two part scene function right here so this is just doing a bunch of string manipulation so it takes the id of the resource splits it by the underscore here capitalizes the first um the first letter of each of those strings that are split joins them together and then loads the scene at that path so this would be gun and then bone and then bone receiver or whatever else so that's how i'm doing it so that means that i can just do something like this if i want the player to start with a new set of guns i can just go bone so now if i start up the game if i did everything correctly so there we go got the bone gun and that's actually way tinier than i thought it was going to be but that's okay so the bone gun is in the game now it's like a little submachine gun and if I shoot, it's only shooting standard bullets right now because I haven't yet made a bone uh, bullet. That's actually really tiny. I might go in and make that bigger at some other point, but not right now. What I will do though, is I'm gonna take this bone receiver and just move the hand right position over a little bit. Shoot two and one. Ah, uh, yeah, there will be no plan to uh, to do shoot both guns at the same time. Because that would essentially mean like infinite shots, right? Infinite ammo. Okay, so there's our little bone gun. If you can see it, it's very tiny, but... <laughs> okay, it actually doesn't look that bad when it's in game. And let me show you the way that um, that I'm actually rendering these outlines too, because that might be interesting. So I have this assembled gun scene, which is when the gun comes together into the game with all the parts together and stitches them together. So we have individual pieces for all these, right? And based on all the positions that I've configured, the assembled gun scene takes all of those and puts them together in the correct positions. But what's interesting is that in here, I have a viewport where I put all of the gun parts. 
And that's so that I can render them all to one texture. And then the viewport sprite here gets that viewport texture and then applies an outline shader. And that's how I'm achieving the outline with the guns. Because if I applied an outline to each piece individually in here, um, there would be like black lines where they connect, right? Like there would be a black line there and a black line there. Just because of the way it works when you're putting sprites in different draw orders that each have outlines and stuff like that. So that's why I did that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Viewports are a little bit finicky to work with, but. Okay, so let's make a bullet now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the crystal bullet and I'm going to make a new or save it elsewhere into the bone folder. And we're gonna load the default palette. Whoops. All right then. And let's make this kind of like a large bullet, I think, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take the bone color that I was using I don't know if that looks good. I'll put a chip in it like somebody suggested. Is that... Does that look like a bone? I guess it kind of does, right? I wonder if I'm thinking about this too much. That's probably all right. Yeah, that should be fine. Looks kind of like a bone. Uh, yeah, I think that's looking all right. Let's see if I can, maybe I should put like some red or something on it. Or would that not look good? I think my shading is a little bit off here, too. I'd do something a little bit like that. I don't know. And then uh, see if I can do some red. I don't know if I have anything that's like. Yeah, that might not be not might not work. I don't really want to use like opacity either because I'm literally trying to strictly adhere to these. So I could do something like make this color transparent and then do something like that but I don't actually think that that does anything so I, f I still feel like I need some kind of highlight but maybe I don't I guess we'll just have to see how that looks. <laughs> I don't know. I'll put little dots right there and see what that does. All right. So I believe I need to make a scene now. So let's go bullet. Yep. So we need to create. Right. So the way I create bullets is I do this. I go to um, new inherited scene and I do a bullet component here, which comes with a lot of the things that I need. And then I just add things as I need. So sprite here, where's my bone bullet? There it is. Okay, we've got the little shadow underneath. I'm gonna save this under my game object bullet. We'll call it Bone Bullet. So we've got the sprite. Um, we want to do some rotation speed here. So let's give it like a 720 rotation speed. And I think I just need to do a collision shape 
2D. And do we want to use a circle? Yeah, I'll probably just use a circle. That's good. I don't want the sprite. Do I want to have it offset or do I want to do the offset myself? I probably want to do the offset myself. That's good. And I think that's all I need to do. So now if I run the game, we should see it work just fine. Need shadows. Oh, it's not outlined either. The other thing I forgot to do is add a hitbox component. I need one of these for sure. This is also very inefficient because my hitbox ends up being the same shape as my... Since this is a kinematic body, it needs its own collision shape so that it can collide with walls and stuff. But I have a hitbox component, which is an area which ultimately ends up having like the same shape. So little inefficiencies like this can stack up pretty quick, but I'm not gonna, I don't think it's worth the effort to fix it. And now we've got our slow moving guns or <laughs> slow moving guns, slow moving, uh, what you call it? What is this thing called? A bone? And we're going to go ahead and add an outline here just very quickly, which should help a little bit. Need physics body and hitbox too. Yeah. There we go. So basically, this is like a melee... It might be moving too slow, but this is basically like a melee gun here. You want to use it up close. Let's change the speed of that. So I believe it's the... Bone barrel that affects the speed. Let's turn it up to 150. Love the gun so far. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Is there a node to combine them both? I don't think so. Maybe a little faster, let's see. So those are flying a little bit faster. I kind of feel like everything's just a little bit too small with this gun. Like I feel like the gun itself is a little bit too small and the bullets are a little bit too small. I'm not gonna spend much more time on the gun on this stream though, just to keep things uh, interesting, but I am going to change the size of this one a little bit just to see what it looks like if I beef it if I beef it a bit, you know? This is also gonna give me more opportunities to make it, um, give it a little bit more detail. So I'm very curious to see what this is gonna look like when I beef it. When I beef it. You know, if you just, sometimes you just need to beef it. That's going to be probably too big. That looks kind of decent. Maybe this needs to be darker. Uh... Looks a little shot, like shotgunny. Beef's what's for dinner. <laughs> what if when you kill things, the bone gun, they drop calcium that acts like a temporary damage bonus? That's interesting. Chunky bone, fish bones. Uh, fish bones are interesting. I don't know. That's the problem. It's like, I love these ideas, but I don't know how to represent a fish bone in a nice way. Oh, you mean like a... Yeah, okay. Yeah, you mean like the whole skeleton, right? Let's see how this looks. Just add a little bit more shading here. I just don't know if that's enough contrast or if this needs to be like a different color. <laughs> Definitely not that color.
Oh, you know what? I can keep it there and maybe I change this one to like that. That looks good. I kind of like that. It doesn't look super good when you're up close, but when you're looking at this, it kind of like has a little bit more texture. And I could potentially use both, you know? I could potentially like... Use these as like a bit of... Little extra grimy texture in there. It's not super noticeable, but... Could be something. Anyway, let's see how that looks. Okay, I think I like that better. What do you guys think? The bone is a little bit chunkier, but I think that it matches the rest of the game just a little bit better being that much larger. So this is just like a really wild gun. So let me think about this. So the benefit of this gun is that it sprays a lot of bullet. It has a lot of bullets and it sprays a lot. I'm trying to think like if I could combine affixes on it. So I was going to I was going to show someone. I forgot who what happens when I add the split affix onto that. So if I do. Uh, what do I call it? Bullet split. So let me show you how this works, too. Um, wait, before I do that, let me just double check something. So I've got a lot of threads in my mind right now that I got to keep track of. So I need to, I forgot how I made sure that the gun parts are able to be presented as rewards to the player after the wave is over. So I just want to double check on that and see if I need to do anything extra to add the bones to the loot table. I don't think I do, but I just need to make sure. And I actually have no clue where that's coming from. Arena loot manager pick gun part. Okay, in here. So the gun part loot table, all, okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing all of the IDs that, so all of the gun part IDs are loaded from the file system on start. And then they're just all added to a giant loot table. And that's how they're picked. So I actually don't need to do any work to add it to the loot table. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when the bones split. So if I add bullet split as an affix here um, to my bone barrel, you'll see that when I hit enemies, the bone will split. Let's see. Whoops. See how it's split into two right there? I shoot one shot and it splits into two. And so that could be really useful. Like you get up right on an enemy and then you create a bunch of other uh, bones. See? <laughs> so that's kind of how the split works. It just kind of takes the projectile, duplicates it, and sends them off in different directions. Why is the uh, projectile a kinematic body? Thanks, by the way, everyone, for the compliments. Looks good. I'm glad it's looking good to you guys as well. Um, so the reason that I made it a kinematic body is because I don't need it to have physics beyond just being able to check if it's hitting terrain. That's basically all I'm doing. Um, I basically just wanted to be able to use, so if I go to my bullet component, I basically just wanted to be able to use this move and collide function since that pretty much handles everything for me. Um, you know, it moves it, it collides. I don't have to do any of the work myself, but I also don't need all the functionality of a rigid body, right? Um, and actually I'm doing two types of checks within the bullet here. I'm doing a ray cast check here every frame. And then if the ray cast fails, I'm actually trying to do like an, um, the area that's associated with the with the bullet. So here, this hitbox component will do a check as well. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I'm being as generous to the player with the hit registration as possible. So if you've got a really fast moving bullet, the ray cast makes it so that you won't miss any shots. And then the hitbox component means that if the ray cast miss, misses either because it's off to the left or the right a little bit, then the hitbox area will be able to pick up a larger collision radius, right? So 
It's kind of interesting how I'm doing that. I think. I don't know. Maybe it's not interesting. Game look really fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. Diogo? Diogo, I think. Gonna make more difficult enemies soon? Yes. Let me show you uh, pits, pitfalls for gun game. Are you talking about like environmental, um, like environmental hazards? So hot chocolate, let me show you. I made another enemy the other day. Let me show you right here. Say hello to the maggot enemy. <laughs> so the maggot enemy, I don't know if I'd call him a tougher enemy, but um, what he does is he does a, uh, a straight line dash at you from across the map. So if I get hit by him, that's how it works. So he's not necessarily tough, but this enemy is designed to make sure that you have to move out of the way. Um, but yes, tougher enemies will be coming. I do have a boss in the game. Um, actually, I can show you. Oh, I died. I'm bad at this. Here, I'll show you. Spawn the Rat King. So here's the Rat King. He's one of the bosses that I made. And he basically just goes nuts on you. So the Rat King leads his shots on you. So you have to constantly like wiggle back and forth. And he does this charge attack where he just just lays down on the trigger of his gun and just rushes at you. And, oh no! So there he goes. See, he's rushing at me. And I died. I, he needs some tuning, but yeah. Um, yeah, regarding environmental hazards, I do. So I'm going to make multiple levels, multiple arenas. The first arena is going to be just very easy. You know, what? basically what you see here. It's going to be the first arena, but the plan is like after 10 waves, you're going to move on to another arena and the arenas as well as the enemies might get progressively difficult, right? So there might be tr spike traps in one arena so that you have to be very careful about not stepping on those at the wrong time, right? Um, even something as simple as having obstacles. So this is a big square that I can freely navigate around, but you can imagine if there was like a hole in the middle where I wasn't I wasn't able to walk over it. So I have to go around like this. Just little things like that, I think, can make the gameplay a little bit more interesting in addition to changing the enemy types. I like this bone gun. I kind of like getting up into enemies faces and just blasting them. So the other thing that I can do, but I probably won't do on this stream is I can make an actual impact effect for the bones. So you'll notice that when the bones hit the wall, they don't do anything. They just kind of disappear. Whereas when I shoot my shotgun, you can see that there's a nice little impact effect, right? Oh my gosh, these things are going wild. So there's an actual impact effect when the shotgun hits the wall. I need to do that for all the projectiles, but I've just been lazy and haven't done it. Remember the Rat King? Yeah, yeah. What if the Rat King's bullet creates incredibly weak mice upon hitting the environment? That's a good idea. I thought about making him just spawn other rat enemies, but having it sort of based on maybe an ability of his, like a projectile, would be kind of cool. So, um, let me remove that bullet split affix because I actually don't want that to be a part of it. At least not yet. So I'm actually going to commit that because that was a good chunk of work that we did right there. So I'm going to say added bone gun. Okay, so let's work on something else, right? Let's uh, let's work on a different aspect of the game. So the other aspect that we're going to work on is let's go to the board here. Can I just bring this over here? So here's the board. So I want to do either a gun affix or a player passive. Hello, welcome to the stream. 
take partial credit for the bone gun. All right, you get partial credit. <laughs> so, um, and you guys can feel free to peep everything that I've got on my board here, but I'm going to be focusing on probably these two columns here, the gun affix and the player passive ideas. So, the question is, which one sounds like fun to work on for the stream? Um, so, we've got some other status effects we could implement, like blood. That might be a lot of work, though, to implement. Gain infinite ammo when taking damage. Gain movement speed when taking damage. Spread. Insert status here to nearby enemies. Spread fire to nearby enemies. Ghost gun. The ghost gun would probably be pretty difficult. That would be an interesting one to work on on stream. Um, I mean, we could give it a shot, but I wouldn't. I, there's no guarantees that I would actually finish it tonight. <laughs> Stack of flame trail after dash. I don't. So let me put that in there. And you'll notice here that I have some things tagged as unique. Um, and the reason is because my intention is to have some affixes be stackable and some passives be stackable. So you could potentially choose a passive multiple times to compound the effect. So the, the easiest one to, to think of is there's a passive where you gain plus one health permanently. And of course, you want to be able to use you want to be able to have the opportunity to do that multiple times, right? So the player health passive is stackable. You can get that passive however many times it comes up in the little window. Um, but some of these are unique, right? Because it doesn't make sense. Like what would happen if you had multiple of the passive? It doesn't doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, I do like the flame trail when dashing. I think I'm going to wait until I have a flame status, though, so that I can sort of reuse the particles. But yeah. What about a wisp that takes damage in placement of, like, a smaller hitbox? That's interesting. Maybe, like, a mobile... Like, so it acts like kind of a mobile shield. That is a lot of stuff to work on, yeah. Um... You know what? So this, the one stack of movement speed when an enemy dies nearby... Gain movement speed when taking damage. Film stones. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that. I know one person said to work on the... Dula said to work on movement stacks, but I'm wondering if we should just try the ghost gun one, huh? Ooh, that's a good idea. Spawn poison cloud when dashing. So different different dash effects, right? If I could type, this would be a lot easier. Frozen area, yeah, yeah. I don't actually have like a frozen status effect written down. So let's do this. I'll just do freeze. I'll know what that means. <laughs> Affix stackable. Phantom gun. All right, you know what? Let's see if we can get the phantom gun done. That one would be really fun. Dash where you leave behind a whirlpool. Okay. Like a, uh, what would the whirlpool do, do? Would it like pull in enemies? Like a... Yeah, so it could be like a whirlpool or like a gravity well or something like that. I know gravity well is kind of like overdone, but... The goal of the game is basically just to take all of the ideas that are across other games and just like stick them all into one game so you could just have like all these possibilities. All right, but let's do the Phantom Gun. I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to go. Stealth. That's a cool idea. I don't think 
I'm gonna go in that direction though because I want this to be like fast-paced action and I don't know how I would make stealth that compelling inside of this kind of game. So I appreciate the suggestion on that one, but I think I'm gonna go sort of the opposite direction from stealth. Okay, let's do this one. Summon a ghost gun that mirrors your lowest damage gun. Okay, so that's a player passive. Let's get started. Rare twin guns that have like a set bonus status effect. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead and add that. That's a, that's a gunfire reborn thing, right? So twin gun statuses. I'll just add that because I know what that means. All right, thank you for all the suggestions, everyone. There's, I, I think as you can see, there's so much potential with this game. And I'm really excited about the game for that reason, because it's just, there's like an infinite number of possibilities. It's just a wide open game. So I'm really, really excited to implement all that stuff. And yeah, there's a lot of work to do, but I want to get it done right. And I want to make sure the game is really, really fun. And then it'll be on Steam someday. Wishlist on Steam. You can't do that yet, sorry. Sadly, you cannot do that yet, someday. I appreciate that, No Name. Appreciate it. Personally has been, oh, I'm making your dream game. Excellent, well, I'm, I promise you I will not drop the ball. How's that? I will try to make your dream game perfect for you. All right into passive creation mode so the first part i kind of covered this did i do a player passive in my video or was it an affix that i did i think it was a passive right so it's basically the same thing so um we gotta go find the passive so we've got all these definitions so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna copy one of these Let's call it Phantom Gun. Phantom Gun Passive Definition. I baited you with the wish. I'm sorry. I I have sort of like an internal goal in my head of having a having Steam a Steam page up by a certain date, but I don't think I'm gonna share that because it's very likely that I'm actually not going to meet that goal. So I I do fully intend to put the game up on Steam, or at least have a Steam page up and ready to go in the nearish future. But I want to have a good amount of content in the game first so that I can create at least a nice wishlist trailer basically a vertical slice of the game and then I can just spend the rest of my time building out the content I appreciate that definitely Nico that's really really kind of you hello Matthias welcome all right actually before I continue with this give me just a couple minutes I gotta go take a bathroom break and I'll be right back okay so don't go anywhere I will be right back. Enjoy Lo-Fi Girl Tunes while I'm away for a few minutes.
All right, I am back. Thank you all for waiting. <clears throat> Hello, Llama Box Art. I like that name, Llama Box Art. A cool passive idea could be if you get hit, you can cause damage to all enemies on your screen, view, or near you, and it could possibly be named Heart of Thorns or something. That's like a League of Legends item, isn't it? Um, I do have... I thought I had something like that. That's a good idea. I do like, um... Yeah, maybe spawning a projectile. So when you get hit, you sort of send a retaliatory projectile or explosive or something. What about a gun that takes on effects of your passives? Interesting idea. That is a very interesting idea. Some passives probably wouldn't be applicable, but that is a very, very out of the box kind of thing. I will think about that some more. Okay. So for the phantom gun, so we've got our definition in place. And what we need to do, what the definition is, is essentially just a container that contains some data about it. So I'm going to say, um, gun that mirrors your weakest guns configuration. I don't know if configuration is the right word, but we won't dwell on that for too long. Things like that can be tweaked easily. Also, there's like no localization in this game. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to have to replace all these strings later in the development, I'm sure, to support um, multiple languages. Okay, so then, so that's the definition, and we got to create a new... <coughs> Excuse me, we got to create a new... Um, Phantom Gun Passive. So you may be asking... Why do I have to define two things? And the reason is because the actual passive um, is a node, and I don't want to have to instance a node just to pull some information out of it because this stuff exists. So if I if I say find all references here, this stuff exists in a loot table. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add this player passive loot table items dot add new and I basically, I'm just going to copy this. So I'm basically adding the new, uh, like, phantom gun passive definition in here. And then the passive definition is picked out of the loot table. And I forgot, yeah. So I have this method in the base class player passive definition that call that's called two passive node. And this does the same thing as the gun part. It takes the name of the class, strips definition out of it, and then loads the node with that modified name. So that's kind of how I'm linking things together. Um, so yeah. Let's rename this to Phantom Gun Passive. And we'll just make this a skeleton for now. I think what this is essentially going to do is this passive is just going to spawn the Phantom Gun but it's not going to control the phantom gun. I'm going to make the phantom gun its own its own scene. So basically in here Oh, I'm going to also need to figure out how to determine which gun is the weakest gun. I guess I'll just use the DPS value. Okay. Now here comes the fun part. Purple overlay and lower opacity. I agree, I agree. How about a gun or passive that locks onto enemies? I do have that drone in danger. That's a great suggestion. And I, I'm going to say it's a great suggestion because it's already in the game. <laughs> uh, it's called a... Um, what's it called? Well, maybe I can just... I don't want to get too off track, but there is a passive. It's called... Oh, no, no, it's not a passive. It's... So if I go to my bone bullet and I instance the travel definition. So I have this enemy tracking travel definition here, which basically, I don't know how technical I want to go with this, but basically a travel definition is a class that contains math on how the trajectory of the bullet should be altered. 
And so this is a very sort of, not very, but it's a complicated one where it basically changes the steering behaviors of the bullet to go toward an enemy. And so I actually put this node onto the bone bullet and now watch what happens when I go into the game. See, it tracks to the enemies. So yeah, already in the game, it's already an affix that can be on guns. And yeah, great suggestion. You're planning some time to make game having mod support. I wish I could tell you yes. The only problem is number one, I've never released a, I, I, w I never l released what I would call a commercially successful game. I've made some money off of my games, but I wouldn't call them commercial successes. And two, I don't, because of that, I don't have the experience knowing what's required to make a game moddable, especially in the Godot engine. That's just, that's a realm that I have no knowledge about whatsoever. And so I would love to do that, but it's just something that I don't know how to do well, you know? Um, and there are other things that I would love to implement, like, I don't know, don't tell anyone I said this. Just, you know, this is all between us right here. But I'm thinking about spending a significant chunk of time to add multiplayer. Don't tell anyone, though. That's just between us. And I'm not making any promises, but, you know, it's our little, it's our secret. Yeah, the Phantom Gun will have its own AI for sure. It'll be basically following you around and shooting and stuff. So let's go ahead and make the make the Phantom Gun. Um, I actually probably want to make this a kinematic body 2D because it will be moving around. So we're going to save that in the entities. What we're going to do is we're going to add an assembled an assembled gun because this is what um, that's where all the gun parts are going to go. And now I have to figure out I have like an aim component in here, I think. Yeah, aim component. What is this? Oh boy. How do I use this? Lead target, set target. I wrote this code quite a bit ago. When did I last write this? August 28th, three months ago. <laughs> So I think I'm going to have to use this aim component somehow to aim the phantom gun. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the aim component in there. Um, we need a collision shape. 2D. And we'll just make it a circle. And we're going to add a velocity component as well so that we can control the movement. So, real quick about these components, right? Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Drone in Danger. Very cool. Thank you so much. I think you are officially the uh, the first donation to the stream on YouTube. So, much appreciated. Thank you. All right, so, oh, by the way, while I'm shilling, um, I got a newsletter at firebelly.com. Sign up for that if you want to keep up to date on my work. I believe the link's in the description. Yes, it is, so take a look at that if, you, if you're interested to stay up to date. Okay, so what do I need to do? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I probably need a script, so let's go ahead and add that. Uh, add a script. Okay, so what do we need to do with our phantom? Oh, I was going to talk about the components. So for anyone that works in Godot. Yeah, is that? <laughs> well, I remember you when it become famous. I will remember you. 
Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I have a terrible memory, so. Um, so components, real quick. If anyone's familiar with Godot, basically these components that I have are individual custom nodes, essentially, that I've made that contain very specific functionality. So, for instance, this velocity component right here, it has a couple of things, max speed and the acceleration coefficient. And what the velocity component does is it essentially just provides a bunch of utilities for controlling a vector two or a velocity vector two. So I can accelerate, I can accelerate in a direction, I can get the max velocity, maximize the velocity in a direction, I can decelerate, I can move a kinematic body. And then I have all these extra properties where I can set like percent modifiers and all this. And the benefit of doing components like this is that I'm able to put this velocity component on literally anything that needs to move, right? So I can put this on my rat, I can put it on my rat king, I'm gonna use it for my phantom gun. I don't have any code related to movement that is specific to an entity. It's just encapsulated in its own thing and I can put it wherever I need it. Highly recommend considering using this sort of like component based design because it greatly increases the reusability of your code um, and makes it easier to build things out. So, but let's actually get this going. So. So I've got a node and it's a assembled gun. And we're gonna see if this works by just doing this here. So in our ready method, we're gonna take that assembled gun. Wow, I'm having difficulty typing today. Add part. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say gun part resource dot from ID. Let's just give it a banana. Receiver to part node. So this is all we have to do to construct the gun. So I'm gonna do the banana magazine and the banana barrel. And just with that alone set up, I should be able to go to my, well, I got to create a new scene and I'm going to call this the phantom gun passive. I got to save this in my player passives here. It has to be a node. So scenes. Mm, yeah, scenes, component, passive, phantom gun, passive. I should be able to Yeah, so I load that. We've already written this, so it's already there. And what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to do an export variable here. Private packed scene, phantom gun scene, just so I have a reference to it. I don't like to hard code things if I don't have to. So build it. Okay, and then we'll take the phantom gun and drag it in there. And so now check this out, right? So on ready, yeah, you're welcome. The component tip, yeah, I'm I'm planning on doing a video that's more in depth about the component based. It's like composition versus inheritance. I'm planning on doing a tutorial video on that soon. I just need to find time. Uh, there's so much to do between work my real job and working on this game and making videos. I have a hard time finding time to make like tutorial videos, but I want to do that more. Anyway, so what we're going to do is going to take this.get main. This is an extension method, which gets the root, which has all these layers. And we're going to say entities.addchild, phantom gun scene dot instance or free node 2d we don't really care about instancing it as the phantom gun we just want to put it in the scene and now check this out i think it should basically be working now so if i go ahead and go to my player 
I have this passive manager node. I'm just going to go ahead and instance the phantom gun passive. Right there. And now when I start the game, there should be a banana gun. Oh, it didn't work. All right. Parent node is busy setting up children. Okay, I think I need to call deferred. We need to get a call deferred. This is one of the most annoying parts about Godot is needing to like know when to defer certain calls because of the order of operations of the engine. It's not, not a big deal, but it does get a little bit confusing. Right. The other thing I forgot to do was set the position of it. Okay, the other nice thing about C-sharp is I really like this null chaining here. So if the player is null, so if the player is not null, it's going to set the global position to the player global position. But I can use the null coalescing operator to say, well, if this side, if the player was null, and so this whole thing returns null, then I can just use vector two zero instead. Makes it really easy to make code that doesn't crash or break or whatever else. How would I do what the component in GD script? Thank you, Hot Chocolate. I'm glad you like the wizard character. A lot of people on that video said that they liked the character. So I think I will keep them. Maybe I'll make some tweaks to them, but I'll keep them. I do like the idea of making different characters like traditional roguelites have. So I'll keep him and I'll add different characters that will sort of satisfy my desire to have something different. So in GD script, it would be the same thing, the component design. It's not necessarily about it being C sharp. It's just, you know, if you have a velocity component, um, this could all be translated to GD script code. And the way that I'm using it is like, so if I go to my rat here, so it's got the velocity component, you can just call get node, right? You know, get, get node velocity component, right? Uh, you get the point. And then when you get the velocity component, you can just call methods within it, right? So I've got velocity override. Um, I'm calling decelerate here. So it's not it's not something that's specific to C sharp. You can uh, you can do that pretty easily in, in GD script as well. Watching this stream without Wi Fi or service. Um, you know, maybe you are the Wi-Fi. Cow eggs. What's up? It's very interesting in terms of project structure. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad that helped. Um, I would. So inheritance is good in some cases. So it, I find that inheritance gets really bad when you have to go more than like one or two levels deep. Once you find the need to inherit something like three or four levels deep, to me, in my opinion, that's that's sort of an indication that maybe you should be doing something differently. Um, so I do use inheritance sometimes, you know, like this player passive is technically inheritance, even though this is just an abstract class, but it's because I want to have a generic set of player passives with a shared set of methods, right? It's perfectly fine to do that in that case, but I find that if you're doing it in Godot, ultimately you end up just having so many special use cases where, oh, you know, you inherited this, but you don't need it, or you needed something, but it's not inherited. And so now how do you figure out how to, you know, do you put an extra thing in the base class because you need it in some very specific subclass? It gets really, really messy very quickly. And so I try to avoid it if possible. But I still use it in very specific circumstances, so you just have to be careful. Okay, so what was I doing? Oh, right, I think I can run the game now. Yeah, so there should be a banana gun when I start the game. Invalid token.
Boom, there's our phantom gun. All right, the passive's done. That's it. That's all we're doing. So we got the phantom gun, and you can see how I constructed the gun out of just... out of just doing this, these three calls right here. But now the tricky part is we need to make it work. And that's going to be a little bit of a different story. So one thing that I need to know is... So each gun has a cooldown, right? There's a period of time between each shot. Naturally, right? If I'm shooting 11 bullets per second, there needs to be a, an, an amount of time between each shot that spaces it out so that you hit that 11 bullets per second mark, right? I need to apply that to the banana or the phantom gun as well. And I don't believe I've been doing that. Well, let me see. In my assembled gun... So, I was very careful not to do anything super specific with the assembled gun. I've been really trying to keep everything, like, this only has a fire method. It doesn't care about the gun stats, really. The only It only cares about the gun stats so that it can assign it to the bullet. But as far as I know, it doesn't it doesn't read the gun stats at all, the, the assembled gun. And so when I call fire, it's always done from something else controlling it. So the player gun manager has a method called try fire, and it is the thing responsible for keeping track of the fire rate timer. It's responsible for keeping track of whether the gun can shoot or not. If I just called fire on the gun, it would fire regardless of what the state is supposed to be. And that presents a problem because in this case, I want the phantom gun to have the same restriction. So that's a little bit unfortunate. But I think let's get the aiming working and just get it basically shooting before I worry too much about that. So I don't know how this aim component is being used either. I'm using it in both the Rat and the Rat King, and I'm just not sure how I'm supposed to use it. Aim component set target. Does this have any bearing over... Hold on, I gotta figure out... I haven't written... I haven't done anything with the aim component in a while. Oh, I see. So the aim component takes a node to aim in here. And then it has some extra variables like smoothing and debug mode. Cool. So I think what I need to do then is set the assembled gun to my node to aim path. I think the smoothing is probably fine. We can probably turn it up. Okay. So let's do public override void. Now I gotta figure out how to find the nearest enemy. And I do have that with my enemy tracking travel definition. So get closest target. So I'm getting the hurt boxes. Cool. So this is gonna be very inefficient and I'll change this later, but what I need to do is get the closest enemy, so. I might just copy, should I copy this or should I make it generic? Um, sorry, bear with me. I'm gonna have to do some refactoring here, I think. So I've got this get closest target node in this enemy tracking travel definition. Now I have another place in the code where I need to do the same thing. And so now what I should do is I should figure out where to put this so that I can use it in a generic way. So 
So what I probably want to do is rewrite it to be something like this. Private node 2D, get closest enemy to point. And we'll put like a vector two target point as uh, probably position is the better word to use here. Um, and so I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. And what I'm going to say is instead get rid of this mouse position and this should instead be target position. Perfect. So what this is basically doing is it's getting all of the enemy hitboxes because I actually don't have a distinction for enemies in the game. The only thing that matters is the hurt box. Um, it gets all the hurt boxes. It assigns the closest one to the first one in the list, checks the distance or assigns the closest distance. Then it loops over the rest of them. And if the distance is smaller, it reassigns them and it keeps going until it finds the smallest one. And then it returns that one as the closest. So now this is generic and I can pull this out and move it somewhere else. Actually, I'm not going to cut that yet. So utils, I'm going to say, probably put it in utils. Um, what's up, Broodling? Um, Pass my idea. Your gun deals more damage the longer you stand in the same place without moving. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was actually kind of similar to, I believe, what Dula said. Dula said something similar about standing in place and being stealthy. But I like that modification where you're standing in place and getting more, more damage. So let me write that down. Now, here's a question for you, Broodling. Should it be... Um, should it be a gun affix or a player passive? Should a, should a gun have that property or should the player have that property? It's a tricky question. Do I want to... I guess I'll just put it in a file called game utils. Do I want to make it static? I'm kind of wondering if I should just. I could either make this game utils an auto load node or I could make it a node extension. I don't think I want to make an extension though. I think what I'll do is I'll just make it a static class and then just have two arguments here. Node. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Could be a gun. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Let's see. So I'm going to add it to my uh, my board, which I think everyone has seen now. Um, so deal increased damage the longer you stay in... I would say the player stays still and we'll do affix and maybe we'll just make that one stackable. Yeah. Are you ever going to add one off gun parts where there isn't a set? That's a good question. I did not think that that thought never crossed my mind, honestly. I just kind of figured I'd build everything as a set and then just throw them into the pile of lootable guns. But that is a very interesting idea. Let me ask you a question. What would be the benefit of having one off gun parts? Like, do you see that fulfilling any sort of specific role? So now that I've done my little refactoring there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it here. Target node equals Get closest enemy to position, args dot bullet component, and then uh, args dot bullet component dot get mouse position. 
I should probably test that and make sure that that still works. Bear with me while I test that. Okay, perfect. Still works. Awesome. Okay, so now that that's been refactored, I can use it in here now. Wait, did I did I completely remove that? I did. Okay. Why is it not letting me use this? Get closest enemy to position. Okay. So what are we going to do with this closest enemy? We're going to say we need our aim component here. So we're going to take the aim component and we're going to say uh, set target position. Yeah. Why am I not call? Why don't I call the set target position? I'm going to rename this. It's very critical that as you're working on your code, you keep refining it. Rename things, refactor things. Be diligent about keeping it from becoming too much of a mess. <laughs> so this is actually a... Uh... Yeah, that's fine. More visual variety and the potential to make lots of wackier affixes without bloating up the loot pools. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. That is a good thing. That's a good suggestion. Because like I said, it had never crossed my mind before, so. Okay, and I'm just going to, just as a really quick and dirty thing, current time. If current time is equal to zero, we're going to say assembled gun dot fire. And we're just going to put a 0.5 second delay between each shot. And then we're going to say current time is equal to mathf dot clamp. Actually, I can just do mathf dot max of current time minus delta and zero. So this will essentially clamp it to zero. And then if it is zero, we're going to call fire on the assembled gun and then Set it back down. Okay, I think I think everything's in place to actually make it shoot now. So let's see. Oh, it crashed. My optimism was unwarranted. Oh, because there may not be a closest enemy. That's a basic null check issue. Perfect. All right. Uh, you've been doing refactors in your code. I love going back after I ugly code and clean things up yeah yeah absolutely refactoring is one of my favorite things to do it sucks sometimes especially when it's a really nasty situation but you feel so good about cleaning everything up past me made me happy today when i found a service to be super generic and reusable <laughs> yeah exactly exactly what about two different barrels of the same set do you mean like um like a different variant so if i had a bone barrel one and a bone barrel two All right, let's see if this works. There you go. Get it, banana gun. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, it's rotating in a very weird way. But I think that's fixable. That's it. Yeah, that's a that's a good thought. Crazy Ed. Crazy Ed, you sound like a lifelong friend. Crazy Ed. Ah, that's just Crazy Ed. 
Crazy Ed used to snort popsicles behind the playground. Yeah, that banana is OP. Okay, so I think we're basically like halfway there. <laughs> we got a lot more work to do. So what do we still got to do? We have to make it mirror the gun parts of your gun and we have to make it use the actual fire time, the fire rate, which should be fine, but let's do this. I'm going to add another node 2D here. I'm going to call this gun root. And the gun root is going to be the thing that gets aimed by the aim component. And the reason is because I'm going to have a function called update facing, which I probably should make generic, but I haven't got around to it yet. And I'm basically just going to copy this. Like I said, I don't... Um, I should, I should make this generic, but it's kind of such a small function that it it's more hassle than it's worth. So update facing visuals that scale, I think. Where's my gun root? Yeah, I think I can just change the scale of the gun root. Oh, I also need to make, before I forget, I need to make this unique. This is the best feature of Godot 3.5, access scene is unique name. That is so nice. I still do it, <laughs> still snorting. Banana gun is a god among man, yeah. The banana god. This is not gun root, this is node 2D. Gun root dot scale. Update facing. I think I'll just call update facing in here. What this is basically going to do is it's going to change the scale of the gun root so that it flips properly. Why is this so difficult? Update facing current aim position. So that should fix the awkward rotating of the banana gun. Let's see. Did it fix the awkward rotating of the banana gun? What are you shooting at? Oh, it's it's shooting the wrong way. Uh, that did not fix it. Why is it shooting the wrong way? I was under the impression that the aim component uses the look at function. Um, yeah, I don't know why this is not... So basically, it's not applying the scale correctly, or it's not aiming correctly, at least. Why is it not aiming correctly? So, yeah, I don't know why it's not aiming correctly. It should just be looking at that position. So this aim component has a position 2D that it moves around. And the reason why that's doing that is because I can get like a nice smooth movement. So the position 2D lurps between um, the target position that you that the thing wants to aim at and the current position 2D. So what I get is instead of, you know, the AI being locked on to you all the time, is I can control how fast the AI locks on to you with a smoothing variable right here. And it should be, yeah, it's using the look at right here. So this is the part that's confusing me. So I have my gun root right here. 
And this is the node that it's here. This will be easier if I put like uh, just a visual in here to show. So if I put the Okay, if I put the receiver in here, this aim component is going to be rotating the gun root like this, right? But the idea is that if I scale the gun root, so if I want to flip it, right? I scale the gun root. It should update the look at angles correctly. At least that's what should be happening. Why it's not happening, I do not know. I'm kind of curious if I need another layer of nodes, which wouldn't make a lot of sense to me, but you know, we're going to try it. So I'm going to go over here and see if it aims correctly. It is not. So it's going the exact opposite direction of where it needs to go, which is not a problem with the rat enemies. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Yeah, I feel dirty when I copy paste as well. It was the opposite of fix. So yeah, I don't know. Part of me is tempted to drop this specific issue for now. The other thing I could try is I could try setting the assembled gun scale, but I don't think that that's going to work. Yeah, so it's still shooting the opposite direction. Why is that happening? That's very bizarre. Hmm. Fun with transforms. Uh, I'll turn on debug mode. Does that even help? So with debug mode, you can see that there's a little red dot in here. And the red dot will lock on to the enemy. I don't know if you can see it there. So it's locked on to the appropriate enemy. It's just not aiming correctly. Um, Is there something I'm missing about the rat here? Well, I should probably turn this back to gunroot.scale. Um, yeah, let's see. So the aim component, so this is the rat. It's setting it to the player position. It's updating the facing. The aim component is... So when when update facing is called, it's changing the scale of the visuals node. So the visuals node is here. And you can see that if I go to my transform and I set that to a negative one scale, it flips the entire rat, right? So everything that's under this visuals node can be set like that. But, oh, I actually don't need for this to be unique. So, um, yeah, that's weird. I might just have to say, I'll figure that out later because there's still more work to do, but I would love to get it figured out right now so I don't have to come back to it. The only difference between this scene and the Phantom Gun is that this has three layers of notes, right? So visuals, gun root, and then assembled gun. Unless I did it wrong. Let me just mirror it correctly. I think I might have done it wrong. So visuals, gun root. Okay, I think I'm 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 on to something. I think this will work. Future, yeah. Hey, it's working! Okay, I think I just set it up wrong. So now it's aiming correctly. So you can see how when it's flipped to the left, it's not upside down anymore, right? If I go to the right, so, okay. 
Wow, that was quite an ordeal. I think here's how I got to fix it. I have my gun root, right? What I need the aim component to do is the aim component actually needs to aim the assembled gun, and then the gun root is the thing that needs to scale. I think that will also fix it. Yep, okay, cool. All right, so I was just being dumb. Classic ID10T error. Okay, so that's been fixed. So now we need to make it mirror the stats of the player gun. So how are we gonna do that? Anyone have any ideas of how we're gonna make it mirror the stats of the of the lowest player gun? Just kidding. Update gun configuration. So I'm gonna have this method here, update gun configuration. I'm gonna call that in a deferred manner after ready. Just to be extra sure that all of the player guns are configured before it attempts to do its own. But I also need to connect to, I need to listen for the gun changes from the player. So player gun manager. So we have this gun updated signal right here, which should tell me when a new part has been added to the gun on parts updated. Left gun, right gun, yeah. Okay. So basically here's what I need to do. This.getPlayer.connect. Is that right? Do I need to do this in a deferred manner as well? I guess we'll see what happens. So I connect, uh, we need this to be the player gun manager. I don't like doing this either. I mean, I guess I'm getting the player from a group, but I have a lot of scenes that are dependent on like the player being in the scene, which is probably not that big of a problem, but it can definitely be a problem. But I don't know how else to do it, so... That's the way it's gonna have to be. So we're going to connect that signal private void on gun updated. And what is coming over the gun stats on the slot. So all we really care about is the gun slot, which is just an enum that is either left or right. Actually, I don't think I even care about this either because I need to check both guns anyway to see which one is weaker. So, I actually don't need that. I just need to check both of them. Hello, Sag Leaf. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? So I need to do get gun at slot. Okay, so let's do this. Update gun configuration. Var left gun equals this dot get player dot gun manager dot get gun at slot player gun manager dot slot left. We'll duplicate that right. These could potentially be null. So I think what I'll do is I'll just do if left gun not e uh, equal null or right gun is equal to null. Then we're going to return. Okay, so now that we've got our guard in place, now we need to get the left stats equals left gun dot get stats var right stats equals right gun dot get stats. And this is kind of janky. What this does is this goes in um, it gets all of the scenes or all the nodes that are of type gun part 
And then it says gun stats from gun parts. And it goes into here. So the gun stats is basically the container that contains all the stats related to a gun and the bullets. I'm doing well, Sagley. Thanks for asking. I'm doing really well. Getting a lot of work done, so... Um, yeah, so this gun stats is a container for all of the stats that are relevant. And it is constructed by taking an array of gun part resources and combining them all together. It's kind of, kind of messy, but this is how I get... Um, this is how I get the stats every time a bullet is fired. I actually go to the assembled gun, get all of the gun parts, and all the gun parts have um, a resource associated with them. So this public gun part resource right here. So the resource exists on, on the node itself. And then I can construct an object with all the stats from all of those parts together. And so basically when I have these stats, uh, I'm just gonna look at the damage here. So what is the DPS? Damage per second. So I'm probably just gonna compare the damage per second of each gun. The thing, the tricky thing is I could do a much more comprehensive comparison of different guns, right? I could say, well, this one has all these affixes and this one doesn't have all these affixes and you know, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to use sort of like a naive damage per second calculation. And if that ends up making the player able to create an overpowered phantom gun, then so be it. So we're going to say var greater stats. Wait a minute. Yeah, we can do this. Greater gun is equal to left gun left stats dot damage per second greater than right stats dot damage per second if that is true then that would be the left gun and then right gun so unfortunately here if they're equal in damage it's just gonna pick the left gun sorry not sorry so that's our greater gun. And now what do we need to do? Greater gun dot... Is there a way for me to get the gun parts? It looks like I don't have a way of getting the gun parts, but that doesn't sound right. I think there's a way, there has to be a way for me to get it. Let's see. So we've got add part here. Yeah, get parts. Why is that not showing up? Okay, well, so we've got our parts here. So these are all the parts that we need to add to our phantom gun. And I'm actually going to do this in a roundabout way because this is returning the actual nodes that are a part of the player gun. And so what I need to do is I need to say part dot gun part resource. I think dot duplicate. Is that what I want to do? Um, we're going to have to see if that transfers the affixes. I'm not sure if it's going to do that. It's only going to return a resource with the exported members copied. How do I... One second. I got to look at my other code. Assembled gun preview or rect. Yeah. So this is a UI element that shows the assembled gun. And I have this working somehow. Oh, this method is not even used. Goodbye.
add part resource. Oh. So even when I'm constructing this assembled gun, it's not even... It's not duplicating the, the resource. Hmm, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, that could be a problem. Is it a problem that I should worry about right now, though? Is there a situation in which the phantom gun could modify the problem? So the problem to back up about not duplicating the resource is that if it's being passed around by reference, then if I inadvertently modify the resource in an unrelated scene and it's been passed by reference, then it will change the player's gun too. So if the phantom gun for some reason decided to change, or if I wanted to add a feature to the phantom gun where the part resource actually changed, it would affect the player gun. So I, think that this is actually a a problem but I am going to change this so so the, I'm gonna just going to check the slot because there's a nice little handy method that I didn't know about. Well, I knew about it, I just forgot about it. <laughs> so let's put this into a different variable here. Just so I don't have to keep retyping this. If gun manager equals null return. Okay. So gun manager dot get parts. Something like that. Get gun part resources for the greater slot. I think in here, ideally, this would duplicate. <sighs> do I want to do that right now? I feel like I should. But I'm not going to. We will deal with the repercussions of that decision later. <laughs> So essentially what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say assembled gun dot add part to part node. And so now every time the player gun is updated, it's going to update the gun configuration. And let's see to the lowest to the lowest gun. So let's see. All right. So it thinks my shotgun is the less damaging gun. So there it goes. Shooting at enemies. Look at that. That might be overpowered. I might have to um I might have to turn that power down somehow. Or maybe just give it like 50% damage or something. Yeah, where'd all the chatters go? Everyone's just chilling, I guess. I don't know where everyone is, but it's Friday evening here. If you haven't gone out by now, then uh, you're just ch staying inside chilling, huh? Looks like we've still got a, a number of viewers here, though, so. So let's see if I can make a weaker gun. 
DPS 33, 39. Wait a minute. Why does it think my shotgun is... Oh, because I needed to do the lesser gun, not the greater gun. Wow. That's why. Lesser slot. Right. Left. Just chilling, yeah. Everyone's welcome to chill. Listen to my soothing voice. As I figure out why I'm being unsuccessful. Look at that. So we got a little, uh... Little bone gun shooting. I like how that bone gun turned out. It just needs to be bigger, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it lock on a little bit faster. 2.37 a.m. Wow. Up late. Sometimes those late nights are just, like, nice, though, you know? There's something about it. So that seems to be working pretty well. So I'm going to see if I can make the gun weaker and then see if it updates. So that's the weaker. Oh, no, I got to make this gun weaker. Let's upgrade this one and see. So it's got a shotgun bone. Let me just check something real quick. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, so now it switched to my shotgun, see, because my my uh, bone gun is more, what you call it? What's the word I'm looking for? It's more DPS. That's the word. Wow. Whew. All right, we got a little bit more to do with this gun. Firstly... What needs to happen is I need to turn off the collision layer here so that I'm not colliding with it. And then we need to add a shadow component so that it looks like it's off the ground a little bit. And we'll just give it like a radius of six. Should be fine. Let's see how that looks. Boom, look, now it looks like it's actually floating. Actually, I wonder if I should... Working on your weapon system as well. Nice, nice. Writing down roguelike concepts. This is awesome. We're just all in here chilling, working on our games. Very cool. I'm going to shift this over a little bit. I think that'll work. Now, I think this shadow component actually probably needs to be in the gun root so that it flips with it. Yeah, that works. Cool. Let's turn off debug mode. <laughs> Sweet. Join the game dev club. Join the de game dev club, Sagleaf. Do you actually have a game to work on? Everyone should uh, tell me about your games that you're um, that you're working on here. Okay, so what am I doing? I need to make I need to give this thing some AI now. Also, I probably need to redo. So I got to do a couple things. Let me write this down. So to do need proper fire rate to do need to follow the player and to do need to not scan so often for new targets because right now it's doing this cl get closest enemy to position every frame, which doesn't appear to be an issue, but it doesn't need to happen that often. So I'm going to put a timer on it. And so it doesn't doesn't do that. So let's do a state machine here. You're working on an action roguelike inspired by Nuclear Throne. It's set on a planet where the time is all weird. Okay. What do you mean by the time is all weird? Is it like uh, 
slow motion or what? Also, really quick, give me 30 seconds. I'm going to refill my water. All right, I'm back. Maybe every amount of bullet, oh, wait, let's see. I'm pretty new to game dev, so right now I'm just working on a small platformer focused on speed. That's a good first, or that's a good early project if you're new to it. Very cool. Maybe every amount of bullets so you don't kill an enemy, but makes them attack other enemies. I'm not sure what you mean by that drone in danger. Maybe every amount of bullets you don't kill an enemy. Make them attack other enemies. So you're saying make it change targets instead of staying locked onto one? I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure if I understand what you mean by that. Um, so definitely Nico. Randomly generated dumb D&D &D scenarios to be played like a drinking game somehow. That sounds very entertaining. Time is all messed up, like the time loops and timeless timelines converging. Okay. I like it. Very cool. I've been thinking about making a top-down shooter similar to gun game, but all guns are turrets that you can move around the arena. Okay. Yeah. But if you want to shoot them, you can fire them from your backpack. Very interesting. Yeah. All cool ideas. It's, uh, I love seeing what people come up with. Some people come up with really, really interesting ideas. It's just fascinating. You guys all watch um, other game dev YouTubers as well. I, I That's like my favorite thing to do with my free time is like watch other people's dev vlogs on YouTube. You're making a hovercraft game where you kill deer. Sweet. That sounds like a good first game as well, or a, for a new new game dev. You're trying to make a movement shooter with roguelite RPG and extraction mechanics. Movement shooter. Cool, cool, cool. Half my subs are game devs, yeah. I feel that. Oh, I see. A passive where every few kills you convert an enemy to fight for you. That would be really cool, like a charmed effect. I'm just writing that down. The deer also hover and drift. <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. All right, let's uh, let's get this thing moving, huh? I want to get this game in a good spot before I say good night. So, put in a, put in some more time on this and see if we can get it get in a good spot here. I want you all to see this basically in its final state before before I sign off. So we'll get it done. Do I even need a state machine? I don't think I need a state machine. I think that's overkill. Hello, Fred Animations. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. I don't have a Discord, sorry. Um, someone asked about that the other day. And the unfortunate reality is that I just don't have enough time to interact with you all in the manner that I would like to if I had a Discord. I, You know, between my day job and working on gun game and making videos, it's just I need to be able to focus on those things. So it's unfortunate, but maybe someday that will change. 
but I do not have a Discord at the moment. Um, so yeah, so we gotta make this thing follow the player. So what I'm gonna do is basically, um, what am I doing? So I wanna take this velocity component, which I have not specified yet. So I'm going to use this velocity component to accelerate to a certain velocity. Or do I accelerate in direction? Oh, I use a pathfind component. I forgot. I need to add a pathfind component. Which, as you can guess, handles pathfinding. Which is not really necessary for the initial level that's just a square, but when I eventually add different obstacles, like I mentioned, it will be necessary, so. So my velocity component, we'll give it a little bit of speed here. We'll give it like 250. That's fine. Maybe we'll give it, turn down the acceleration coefficient. Why did this need to be a node 2D? Oh, so I can draw a debug, yeah. Okay, um, so pathfind component dot follow path. I also want to set again. I don't know why I'm not using this verbiage here. Set target position. So I got to set the target position for the pathfind component, which is this target position that I've got here. And then I want follow path, which is just going to use the velocity component. And then I call velocity component move. Let's see if that works. Look at him. He's my little buddy. He's kind of going crazy, but let's draw. I want to draw the, the debug and see what happens. Verbiage. OK, so it's basically working. It's just it's kind of awkward when he catches up to me. He just kind of awkwardly stops. So perhaps what I want to do is turn that down, the acceleration coefficient. And I want to also set the target position to be somewhere, um, somewhere like off to my side, right? Like I don't want it to be right on top of me. So I might want to do something like Let's create a timer. And we're going to call this the position offset timer. I'm going to make it auto start. We'll give it a 0.5 wait time. Actually, we're going to change this type to a random timer, which is an add on that I made myself. I'm very proud. So my timer random offset timer. Is that what I called it? Position offset timer. Oh, you can tell I'm getting tired. So position offset timer, I need to connect to this. So
So what this is going to do is I'm going to keep track of a vector two position offset. And this is basically just going to be added to my target position and my pathfinding. So on position offset timeout, should probably call this timer timeout. All right. So my position offset is equal to vector two dot right dot rotated degrees math util dot rng dot rand f range zero three sixty, and then we're gonna say times math util dot rng dot rand f range. We're gonna do a minimum of thirty two pixels away with a maximum of sixty four pixels away, and that is our position offset. And I'm just going to go private void update position offset. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can call it in the ready method. I don't like to call the connection methods outside of a context where they're actually being called by the signal. You know what I'm saying? Hey, thank you, name taker. What up? Thanks so much for the five dollars. Appreciate it. Very cool. Very cool. I don't know what the wheelchair symbol's about, but all good. All good. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Have you ever played seen the game Voidigo? I have played it for a little bit. Yes. Um, I didn't play it enough, though, to have a very sophisticated opinion on it. Is there anything in that game that particularly stands out to you? I remember using guns as like melee weapons, right? Am I right about that or just making that up? So when we got the position offset in place, what I can do is I can say target position plus position offset. Okay, that should make it better. You think it's it's satisfying to see people coding? Yeah, I think so too. So the problem here is that he's kind of orbiting around the point. So I wonder if I actually need to go the other way with my acceleration coefficient. Turn it up. Guns can be used for melee, okay, okay. What is going on here? There's nothing here that I'm doing that's feeling particularly good. Navigation agent path desired distance target desired distance. Maybe I should be able to change that. Target desired distance. The distance threshold before the final target point is considered to be reached. Before path point is considered to be reached. Yeah, so I think I want to be able to set. I'm going to change this to make it public so that I can access it in my phantom gun. So what I want to do is I want to say pathfind component dot navigation agent. Oh, did I do it wrong? I didn't change it to public. Navigation agent dot target desired distance. We're going to set the target desired distance to something a little bit higher. And I'm hoping that, that will smooth out that a little bit. Okay, it seems to have worked. Maybe we'll turn it up to 32. So my tiles are 32 by 32. I think what I might need to do is say, oh, I think I know what I need to do. So in here, I need to say, if pathfind component dot is finished, 
navigation agent dot is path is is there like an is finished is navigation finished yeah returns true if then yeah so in this case I think I want to do velocity component dot decelerate let's hope that that um that works It's very hard to see what's going on when I keep getting hit by enemies. <laughs> I think I can actually wait a minute. I think I can turn on God mode for the player. Yep. Cool. So now I can watch in peace. There's still something weird about the pathfinding. Maybe I'll set the uh, path point as well. Or, or not set, but change it. So in here, path desired distance. We'll set that to 16. I'm just like, it's, it's like he's rubber banding around a lot, which is kind of annoying. See, like, look at that. Why is he orbiting? He should be done with his pathfinding. Is there something... Let's see. I guess I shouldn't spend too much time on this, but... I'm curious to see why... So, it's calling set target location when I set target position in here only if the interval timer is stopped and then when I say follow path okay I think the problem is I need to do this if navigation agent dot is navigation finished then I need to return out of here because if I'm calling follow path while there is no path then it's still going to be calculating this direction and so I think that's the problem so And I think what I can probably do is prevent it from generating another path. I wonder if I should prevent it from generating another path if it's within a certain radius of the player. I mean, I don't even know if what I just changed is working. So we'll print that. <laughs> take a look at the output okay yeah so it was definitely thinking that the navigation was finished all right well i guess that'll just have to be fine for now it's i yeah I, i'm not gonna worry about getting it perfect but i do want it to be perfect so maybe i will worry about it Set target position, follow path. Oh, you know what? Maybe what I want to do is... If I stop accidentally undoing everything. Okay. So what I want to do is say, if... The navigation is not finished. No, that's not going to work. Okay, never mind. Scrap that. Whatever. We'll just leave it as is for now. We have other things to do here. So it's following the player. We need to fix it so it doesn't scan so often from for enemies. So I'm going to say add child node timer target acquisition timer might be totally wrong but it might have something to do with focusing on multiple enemies no so that's a good thought 
but the pathfinding doesn't have anything to do with the enemy position. It's only has to do with the player position. So if I got rid of all this, which is all the enemy path, uh, enemy tracking stuff, you could see that it still has the same issue. Same. It's kind of just like rubber banding around. And that might just be because it's overshooting its target. I really, yeah, I probably shouldn't spend so much time on this. I don't know if this is entertaining or not, but um, sometimes these things take a lot of tweaking. I wonder if I just set this number to be bigger. So this target desired distance, turn it up to two tiles. That's rubber banding even harder. Um, can I set the pathfind component dot interval? Let's add another method to the pathfind component. How's that sound? <laughs> Bored AF. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. So let's say pathfind interval. Uh, so I'm going to set the pathfind interval and that's going to be, uh, what is it? So what I need to do is I need to say interval timer, so float min time. Wait a minute. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going to do that. That's overkill. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go here and make this editable. Editable children, and then I'm going to edit it here. So I'm going to set the wait time to be larger on the pathfind interval and see if that fixes it. Nope, had no effect whatsoever. Cool, well, I'm glad I tried that. <laughs> I don't know, I'll probably uh, fix that later because I don't know exactly what's happening there. So we'll just move on to the other things. Okay, so let's fix it scanning every frame for the closest enemy. So I have the target acquisition timer here I'm just gonna set it to like a tenth of a second, so it'll check every tenth of, or it'll check 10 times a second for the nearest enemy. And so let's go ahead and grab it in here. So the target acquisition timer, let's connect to the timeout signal. So on target acquisition timer. So what I'm going to do is private node 2D target node. And so what we're going to do essentially is target node is equal to that. Oh, not var target node, just target node. So we're grabbing the closest enemy node 2D, and then in here, just say if is instance valid target node, we're gonna aim. Otherwise, what we're gonna do probably is set a different. Let's do it uh, aim component dot set target position. Why don't we just make it the opposite direction of the player, right? So we'll take the var direction to player is equal to this dot get player 
dot global position null coalescing into global position and then we're going to subtract from this thing's current position whoops and then dot normalized okay so that's the direction of player we're going to set the target position is equal to global position minus direction to player dot uh let's just multiply it by like 10. so when there's no enemies around it should be pointing away from me at all times there it goes yeah see how it's pointing away This thing's wild. All right, let me turn off the annoying debug draw, and I'm also gonna turn down the velocity of it. Here's my little guy, he's following me. <laughs> wow, that turned out really good, look at him. Look at him go. Maybe I'll just play a few waves before I go into the next, the next piece of work. Um. So wait, he's gonna actually, so now he's gonna apply poison to the enemies now too. I keep calling it a he, I probably should stop doing that, it's an it. It's an inanimate, well it is an animate object actually. So this might be a balancing nightmare because this thing is gonna have all the affixes of your gun. So maybe I shouldn't make it have the same fire rate well i guess what is what does the chat think here so i've got this gun which is duplicating my weakest gun should this gun have the same fire rate and lower damage should it have lower fire rate and the same damage should it have lower fire rate and lower damage is there something else i should do with it basically because the game is going to be balanced around having two really powerful guns adding a third powerful gun into the mix um, has the potential to like be game breaking in a bad way. So I'm just trying to figure out ways of how I can tone it down and still keep it in the game. Probably just an overall debuff. Yeah. The other option is to maybe disable the player's gun that it's copying, though I don't know why you would really do that. Lower fire, higher damage. Okay. Scale it with the number of wave clears. Okay. That's an interesting thought. Lower both and despawn sometimes. Make it grow in power with time. That's similar to the other. Yeah, that's the, similar to that suggestion of making it scale with the wave count. Possibly damage the player as well. Hmm, that one might be a little bit frustrating. You, you'd be like, why am I dying? <laughs> oh, I got bullet tracking on this one. The more kills it gets, the more powerful it becomes. Could do that. If you don't kill anything for a while, it could disappear. That's an interesting thought. Although this is going to be like a permanent player passive, so... Um, I don't know if I want to do that exactly. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about it a little bit. Um, what, what? Let me see what it looks like if I if I nerf the damage here. So how would that even work? Um, how would that even work? Why did this go on a new line? Is that supposed to happen? Hmm. All right. Well, whatever. <laughs> 
Wait, if I format the document. Anyway, if you want to make it stronger over time, make it count its own kills and skill with that or something. Yeah, that or waves or something. Tell you what, let me um, let me commit what I have before I start making changes. <coughs> I don't like to get my my changes too big before I commit. It makes me nervous that I will experience sudden power loss and be ruined for life. Okay. I have 2,000 error messages. So, let's, let me see what happens when I look at my assembled gun here and I connect to it. So, if I go to my assembled gun, connect, name of, on assembled gun. Uh, sorry. Assembled gun dot fired. Oops. Parts updated. How am I supposed to know when this fires? I guess I can emit a signal here. What is this commit thing everyone does? <laughs> Uh, good question. Um, if that's a serious question, it's called version control, and you should look it up. But if it's not a serious question, then good joke. So I think what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to do a... I'm going to emit a signal from the assembled gun. Public delegate void fired. And it's going to do it's going to pass itself probably. So we're going to say emit signal name of fired and we're going to pass this as an argument. Cool. And then I'm going to connect in here this na uh, name of actually did I even need to do this yes I uh, I actually didn't need to do this I'm getting tired I guess because I have a reference to the assembled gun I mean I'm calling it I'm firing it here oh but the thing is oh this is going to be tricky actually So here's the problem that I'm facing. I need, so I was gonna try to nerf the damage of each shot that it shoots. But the way that I need to do that is I actually need to modify the gun stats before they get assigned to the bullet. So the gun stats are assigned to the bullet here. And once they're assigned to the bullet, I can't modify them unless I have a reference to the bullet, which I don't have. There are other ways that I've modified the damage. So like if I go to um, damage, missing health damage passive. So this is a passive that the player has. And what it does is on bullet creation, there's this event, this game event on bullet creation Oh, this is this is going to be a problem too. Wait, this this phantom gun is introducing all kinds of problems. So when a bullet is created, it assigns damage to the gun stats, which is great. But I don't know if I can use that in my phantom gun. And also, I think the phantom gun is going to benefit from all the player passives, which I guess, no, that doesn't make sense. I don't think the phantom gun should benefit from the player passives because there are some player passives that just don't make sense in the context of a phantom gun. So that probably shouldn't be the case. Wow. 
Wow, this is, um... I might have to spend some time thinking about this, so let me write a note in here. To do. This emits a bullet creation event. I need to, so basically I need a way of determining when a bullet comes from a player versus when it comes from an enemy versus when it comes from the phantom gun or a different source, right? Because I could imagine having other things which create friendly bullets that shouldn't benefit from things like this missing health damage passive, which increases the damage of the bullet based on your missing health. The way this is currently set up is that as long as the bullet's not from an enemy, it applies the damage. So I think instead of saying is from enemy, I should probably be saying is from player. I should probably do both. But I think that's what I need to do. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to play with this. Actually, maybe I will do this. Ah, oh, this is gonna be difficult. No, I'm gonna need to refactor some things. So if I call fire from the player gun manager, that's gonna call get gun stats. Is enemy. I guess I could just do another export variable called is player. I could do that. <laughs> Rather than assume it's all coming from the player. Maybe a team system. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be using boolean here. I should probably use like an enum or something, right? Um, you know what? Unfortunately, I think I'm a little bit too tired to be able to think through this correctly and I don't want to screw up anything super badly. So I think I'm just going to call it right there. I'm going to play a few minutes of the game just so everyone can see, see how it works. Oh, I also do want to make sure that it's, um, that the phantom gun is being properly added to the passive loot table. So let me just make sure that that is correct. I'm just gonna bump up the weight on this to a thousand so it's guaranteed to pop up. And that will allow me to, to determine that this is working correctly. All right, so let's play a little bit of the game. And let's, let's just see how far I can get. Right now, there's no end to the waves. So I'm going to see see what kind of wacky combos I can make. Summon a phantom gun that mirrors your weakest... Oh, there's an apostrophe missing. Wow. Choose... Cool. So that worked really well. So I was able to choose the passive from in-game and it spawned. I need to do a lot of work on sound effects too still. Game development is a lot of work. Like a lot of work. Uh, let's see, which one do I want? Clear nearby bullets on dash, increase movement speed by 15%, or increase movement speed by 10% for each enemy within 96 units. 
I also don't know if this is clear enough, this 96 units. It's basically pixels, but I might have to come up with a different measurement system. Let's do clear nearby bullets on dash. First bullet of the magazine deals 100% extra damage. Reroll. Yeah, let's do this one. These guys are getting destroyed like they're nothing. Cool. Let's see what else I got here. Increase health, let's do that one. Got banana. <laughs> I love the bananas, dude. It's so funny. Cool. More balancing work needs to be done because obviously I'm just tearing through these guys and I have barely played the game. So lots of balancing to be done still. But I figure I'll build the content out and then I'll just keep doing playthroughs, figure out what's wrong. Ooh, create an explosion when the magazine becomes empty. I like this one a lot. Reroll. Bullets track to the nearest the crosshair. See, this is the other thing about... So if this affix ends up going on the phantom gun, then what's going to happen is that the phantom gun is going to lock onto the same enemy as your cursor, but it will be aiming at a different enemy. So um, there's some things I obviously didn't think through here. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out too. Let me see. Let's put this back down. I'm gonna add a note. I might, I'm kind of tempted just to make none of the affixes work so that you can't, that might be a way to balance it. It's just like have the phantom gun use the raw stats instead of all the affixes. Then I don't have to worry about it being overpowered. And also I don't have to worry about all these conflicts with affix is not working properly but let me just write a to do and i'll think about it some more uh what, what was it so bullet tracking affix properly on phantom gun uh let's see what it works let's see what it does though equip it I want to see if it like aims at a different enemy. Oh, well, I got the boss up here, so. I love having a little gun companion though. That's pretty cool. Also, I just experimented with making the waves time-based instead of, so prior in prior devlogs, the waves were count based so you just kill like 10 enemies and that's the end of the first wave right but I made it time based now to incentivize killing things faster because the more you kill things the more gold drops but the problem is that now it's bugged on boss waves and I get stuck I get soft locked which is unfortunate Cool. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night there. If you guys are interested, you can check out my website, firebelly.com, sign up for my newsletter. I sent out an email notifying everyone in the newsletter of the, the stream that I was doing tonight. 
So if you want to get those kind of notifications, just go here, type in your email, which is not going to be admin at fireability.com. It'll be your own email. Oh, it, it broke. There we go. Um, fill in your email and then you'll be on the list and you'll get notified. But yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me. Got a nice stream in three and a half hours. Not bad at all. Got a lot done in the game. Still some stuff to figure out, but I'm really happy with everything that we did tonight. And yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I'll see you all in the next live stream and or devlog, whichever one comes first. All right. Good night, everyone.